Aloha and welcome to the Business in Hawaii show. I am Dela Yanagita and we are broadcasting live from the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com and while there, please subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people and our guests share with us their journey to building a successful business right here at home. In the Think Tech studio today is Robert Kundiff and Mary Albitz from the Small Business Regulatory and Review Board. Robert and Mary, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Um, so I understand, Robert, you should be addressed as chairman. And uh, Mary, you are also a board member with the Small Business uh, Regulatory and Review Board. Is that correct? Correct. Before we go into exactly what the Small Business Regulatory and Review Board does, um, I'd love to hear from you individually about um, what you do outside of the Review Board. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure would like to defer to Mary first and she can begin first. Okay. Uh, I am the owner of Island Art Party, which is a paint and sip studio on Maui. And we take people step by step through painting whatever painting is that day and they get to take home their masterpiece souvenir nice very nice and yeah chairman. super fun so my brief uh background Dalen, is uh born and raised in hawaii um basically spent my entire career here in hawaii i've spent uh, just over 30 years in the packaging industry with a company called warehouser uh, we had a manufacturing facility on nimitz highway where we manufactured corrugated packaging and through that uh, business i was very fortunate to be able to interact with uh, several of the state's industries and get a better insight as to uh, what what they are confronted with on a day in and day out basis um, so that was a tremendous experience and uh, a knowledge source for me as as i had my career in packaging um, about two years ago i retired out of it and I'm currently a business consultant helping you know different businesses and industries uh, to work on operational improvements strategic planning those types of things very nice. Um, you know, the both of you being small business owners and giving up your time to volunteer your time to the uh, Small Business Regulatory and Review Board is such a generous, generous offer to um, small businesses and small business owners alike. Um, what I'd really like for us to do today is to learn about what the Small Business Regulatory and Review Board does. Um, because I think a, a lot of people don't know um, the magic that you folks take care of right r right there within, um, you know, your scope. So could you give me some background on how the, and we'll call it the SBRRB, if if you don't mind? Yeah, that's easier. It's a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> um, and how it was established. Mary, I, I don't know if, if you want to start off or if, uh, Chairman, you, you want to start off? <laughs> I can tell them. Um, and, and, and for the sake of uh, um, the viewership, maybe you can throw up slide number one. And so what, what happened was uh, back in 1980, U.S. Congress passed uh, an act called the Regulatory Flexibility Act. And that basically established in, in a nutshell the insurance that regulators uh, don't burden small business disproportionately. Um, and so over time, Hawaii enacted uh, the Small Business Regulatory Flexibility Act in 1998 uh, under the statute, uh, Hawaii statute HRS 201M. And so that statute basically created the Small Business Regulatory Review Board. And we are administratively attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. Um, and we are very fortunate to be attached uh, with that state agency and, and certainly thank and appreciate all of uh, Director Mike McCartney and Deputy Director Randy Tanaka's support and assistance as we conduct our business. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about um, the members of the board? Mary? Sure. We have two gentlemen from Hawaii County, James Lee and Garth. Yamanaka, 
and I'm the representative from Maui. And uh, there's four from Honolulu, our chair Cundiff, um, Dr. Nancy Amaspera Walk, uh, Jonathan Schick, and Harris Nakamoto. And then we have Will Lydgate from Kauai County. Now, how do all your, various, I'm sorry. This is all various, um, from various different businesses, so. Now, how do all of the board members, or how, how did you all find your way um, onto the review board? Well, there was a small business uh, convention at um, on Maui, and I met Dory there, who works for the Department of Economic Development, and she recruited me. You know, suggested that I might be a good board member, so I applied, and so people uh, submit an application to the board, and they have to be um, referred by the governor or um, senators or uh, representatives. Chairman Kundiff, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the board's purpose? Sure, absolutely. And you know, maybe you might want to throw a slide here too. Um, so basically, our, our purpose, and, and there's the statutory part, and then there's really the, the emotional or business element to it. Um, on the statu statutory side, uh, we basically review um, state agencies as they initiate or make changes to rules and regulations. And they're required by statute to uh, develop a before public hearing impact statement. And then after the hearing, they have to develop a, a post hearing impact statement. And so that's the statutory side. But quite simply, what, what we try to do as a purpose is to work towards creating and sustaining in an environment where small business can succeed and grow. It's kind of the bottom line is, is making sure that as, as rules and regulations are developed and you know we recognize that there's a, they are important so that we can ensure that we're complying with, with laws and environmental impacts and creating a, a competitive and equal competitive field. So in the process of doing that, making sure that, that small business voices are heard and then in the process of being heard that we're developing rules and regulations that really facilitate them to succeed and grow. Now I know uh, we also have another slide that's a pictorial of uh, the makeup of the board. Uh, is that slide number three? That would be slide number four. There you go. So there's all the good looking members of our group. Of course. And so is it at the board's discretion to add members or how does that get assigned? Yeah, no, it's, uh, the original uh, makeup of the board uh, was was dictated by statute and it was originally set at nine members. And we have uh, member representation from each county um, and then from, from Oahu. In the process of conducting business, because we are consistent of you know small business owners, extremely business pe busy people that donate their time and occasionally um, have to tend to their business, and so we we really recognize that that sometimes we had a problem reaching quorum, and so uh, last year's legislative session we went to the legislators and asked for an additional two members to join our team, uh, which was approved. And so now we have 11 members on our board, nine current, and we've got two prospects going through the process right now for confirmation. Very nice. Um, I, can we also bring up slide number three at this time? Can you speak to a, a little bit about the, um, the, the extended purpose? I know you alluded to the HRS briefly. Sure, Mary, you want to take it? Yeah. Uh, so whenever a department has new rules, like said, they bring them to us before public hearing. Um, we talk to them, and our biggest push is to make sure that they get as much stakeholder input as possible. It really works a lot better that way. We get better um, decisions that everybody can you know, compromise and agree with for the most part. Um, sometimes, you know, that doesn't happen, but but when they do get more stakeholder input, that's more likely to happen. Um, there was a, a recent one, D 
dealing with the um, oh the the manta ray uh, viewings at night off of uh, the island of Hawaii, and there was there's one boat that is um, uh, propelled by by oars. It's not motorized, and they don't have the same lighting things that that the other ones have and so they can they're able to cater to people with disabilities and elderly and things like that and so the rules were going to impact them very negatively and so they brought their concerns to us and then we were able to have them work with uh, DLNR to work out an agreement that worked for everybody involved so that's an example I think what's interesting on, on that slide that we were just looking at was also the definition of small business. Um, because I think very commonly in Hawaii, we assume um, that most businesses fall under small business. Could you define that for us? Correct, yeah. Uh, small businesses are businesses with 100 people full time or less. That's pretty big. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a wide spectrum, and and I think it's important to recognize the fact that ninety eight percent of the businesses in Hawaii uh, fall within that definition of a small business, which is less than a hundred full time and part time employees, and it's a for profit organization. Um, the other interesting fact is that fifty seven percent of all employees in the state work in small business, and so. It really is, as you hear the, the terminology every now and then, that it's the backbone of, of the economy. It really is the backbone of our state's economy. And a healthy small business community is really critical to, to the state's economic success. And and you often see the fact that we're, we're ranked, I think, 2018, we were ranked number 47 out of 50 states as the top states to do business in. And so as a board, I think we're trying to do our little part as to, you know, moving the state in a direction to be a little bit more business friendly. Um, and as Mary alluded to, you know, the state agencies and the rules and regulations that are developed are a critical element in that. And so as we try to bring state agencies and small business people together to really reach, you know, some level of, of cooperation and uh, development of that, that work for them. We're going to need to take a short break, but when we come back, I really wanted to talk about um, how the review board helps small businesses. And of course, um, I've had the honor to sit in in one of your meetings, and they are extremely uh, detailed. Um, and I definitely want to ask some questions about that. Um, so we're going to go to that short break. This is Business in Hawaii, and we'll see you back here shortly. Hey, aloha everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Aloha, Stan Underjiman here. You can see me every Tuesday at 3 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we're not on Friday anymore, so don't be looking for me on Friday. I'm on Tuesday at 3 here on Think Tech, coming to you live and direct from the beautiful studios in downtown Honolulu News Pioneer Plaza. So please join me, and we'll talk everything about hydrogen and clean energy, not only for Hawaii, but for the whole wide world. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. With us today is Chairman Robert Cundiff and Board Member Marielle Beats from the SBRRB, or the Small Business Re Regulatory and Review Board. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, when we went to break, uh, we were talking about the purpose of the review board. Um, tell me a little bit about what the review board does for small businesses. Yeah, certainly, we'd be happy to. And, and uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, Dalen, thank you very much for this opportunity to be here with you and to be able to engage with your audience in this manner. Um, you know, one of the objectives that, that we are trying to accomplish 
in terms of what the SBRRB can do for small business is to grow and increase our outreach. Um, and so we're trying to do different things and be creative in the way that, that we get out in the community and, and we reach out to small business so that they know, you know who we are and what we do uh, and how we can help them. And this platform is a, is a perfect way for, for us to accomplish that. So we thank you very much. Um, you know, some of the things that we do is is to uh, identify where the regulations are a burden to small business. And as we recognize what those burdens are, there's a process that we can go through to help small business surface it and interact with the state agencies, you know, to at least surface and, and get a conversation going about, you know, what may or can be done um, to minimize, limit, or reduce uh, those impacts to small business. Um, and so we work close with the state agencies. The state agencies uh, are very willing, for the most part, to work with small business. They understand the critical nature of small business. And so uh, they, they do reach out uh, quite a bit proactively with small business stakeholders. And, and we found that to be the best way for um, these impacts to be minimized. Um, we also are available to take complaints from small business where they recognize where there's a, an impact to their ability to succeed and grow. Um, and I think a little bit later, we'll identify where the tools are, where small business can use them um, to help. Thanks. Mary, I have a question for you. So as I had mentioned when we went to break, I, I had the honor of sitting in in one of your meetings, and they are extremely detailed. And it seems as though, uh, as a board member, you need to know quite a bit about all avenues of business in each sector of the state government. Uh, tell me about the scope of knowledge that you need to, to serve on this board. <laughs> The main scope of knowledge is having an idea of, you know, what all is entailed in a small business. So being a small business owner, um, you learn that you have many hats. You know, I have many hats that I wear. And so having that experience under all those hats really helps to bring that to those meetings. And that's what's great about having a whole board is be with everybody's different businesses that they're involved in, you get that perspective. Uh, so that's, I think that's how we're able to really drill down and on everything. Well, I was extremely impressed at the scope of knowledge that all of you had to possess in, in order to um, hear the, the different departments and agencies speak to, you know, the, some of the things that they're doing that could that could impact small business, positive or negative. It, it, it was it was just amazing, this, the scope of knowledge that you all held. Um, if you don't mind, Dylan, I will, I will add to that that you know, the, the board members are volunteers and uh, each month we have meetings and those meetings, uh, the material for those meetings are hundreds of pages long. So um, God bless our board members. They're, they're an awesome group of individuals. They uh, dedicate a tremendous amount of time reviewing the information to be knowledgeable about subject matter so that when we get into our meetings, they're able to ask questions. They really surface the issues that impact small business. And, and we have a great administrative staff with Dory and Jatem, and uh, they support us tremendously. And, and we just have a great group, and I'm, tr I'm truly blessed to have them on the team. I know that a lot of your fellow small business owners would be interested in how they can help. Um, maybe they may want to uh, be able to be considered to join the board or um, just how they can support your efforts. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, absolutely. And, sure. and for the sake of discussion, maybe put up uh, slide six. And so, you know, the biggest way that small business can can help our board is uh, through participation and involvement. Um, e even though we run small businesses ourselves, you know, we're not always the subject matter experts in, in how a, a particular rule or regulation is impacting their ability to succeed. And so we certainly want them to get involved. 
um, through their involvement, then we can gather information on, on how a specific rule is burdensome to them um, and how difficult it is to comply with some of these rules. Um, and, and in the process, we've developed a, a couple of tools to facilitate that, which, which we can discuss in a little bit as well. But mostly it's uh, for them to get involved. You know, you mentioned earlier that the board is a group of volunteers, which we are, and so we're doing our best to try to help you know, the state's business uh, environment and to help small business. And so what we could ask of the small business community is to also get involved so that together we can really make a difference. Mary, that, that level of service that you folks provide to the small business community is, is great. Um, tell me about the, the, the time commitment that you, you spend um, with the board. Yes, uh, I spend a few hours before the meeting, the day before, usually uh, a couple days before, reading over the material, getting acclimated to it. If if there's a particular part of it I don't understand, I read further, do some research. Uh, you know, if it's in an area that I'm not familiar with, you know, I'll look it up on the map and and uh, try and try and see what's what's around that, so that I am as knowledgeable as possible about whatever's being presented. Uh, and then, you know, flying over, getting up, you know, super early, getting in the airport early, flying over, um, which, you know, the state fortunately so far has paid for it. Uh, so that's that's been that's been great. And then I've been able to do some business while I'm over there also. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I don't get back depending on what flight I have back. I don't get back till, you know, evening time. And then I'm usually pretty tired by then. I, I, bet, I bet. So it's so it's like a whole day. Yeah, it's the whole day plus a few hours, you know, the days before. So in the service that you provide to, to the state and our small business community, do you get any feedback? Yeah, we definitely get feedback. Um, we have several individuals, and, and again, I mentioned Dory Palkovich and Zatem Alcos, and, and they're our administrative staff at, at DBET. Um, they will get emails, they'll get responses through our website, uh, they will receive letters, and, and a lot of the small business where they recognize where through our process um, and our interactions that, that we've actually made a difference for them, so they show their appreciation in that matter. Um, you know, you would think that some of the state agencies would look at us as as a as a conflict to what they're trying to accomplish, but it's quite the opposite. A lot of our state agencies work very well with us um, and with small business, and and as we facilitate the process that is established by statute uh, and working closely with state agencies and the involvement of small business, it really makes for a smooth process, which they appreciate because uh, it, it could get very lengthy at times. You know, um, Think Tech Hawaii has had the privilege of speaking with other divisions from DBED. Um, and one of the things that I'm impressed with the most is the programming, the tools that are out there to help our community and our business owners, our small business owners, um, to, to help launch and support their efforts um, to be entrepreneurs in, in, in our state. Um, and I do know that the review board also um, has tools to support. Can you t can you tell us about? Can you both tell us about those? Sure, Mary. Why don't you start? Sure. So the our website has uh, historical information on various rules. You know, this uh, has a rule status tracker. If it's you know, especially that's really helpful if it's one you're really in, in, interested in. Um, again, like Robert said, we have the regulation for review uh, that they can submit. Then there's also the rule making process. We have a whole diagram on the website of the rule making process and where small businesses can submit their input along that way. And there is multiple uh, times that they can do that. And then it also has all our meeting dates, our agendas, minutes and our, you know, all that information for each meeting. So, uh, Dalen, quite, quite recently, over the last year, we spent a lot of time revamping our website. Um, I think a lot of our board members, when we joined, we kind of 
felt that the, the website was a little too much government looking. Not that that's a bad thing, but as we reach out to small business, we want them to, to feel like they're working with a, a board and an agency and a website is really there to support them. So we spent a lot of time revamping that. Um, I think we recognize the fact that, you know, small business owners, leaders and entrepreneurs, they, they are busy working on their business. And so as our meeting comes up on a monthly basis at, at 10 a.m. Um, or as a public hearing surfaces, it's usually during the daytime while they're busy doing their work. And so we felt that it, it wasn't the easiest way for them to bring forth their information um, or their thoughts about certain rules and regulations. And so we revamped our website to be a lot more user friendly for small business after hours when they're done with their day to log in, you know, take a look at what the status of rules are, to be able to submit information to us on how rules are impacting them and where they feel that uh, you know we can improve. And and so that website as a tool has, has really become a, a, a way in which uh, we can engage with small business a lot easier. I wanted to share with our viewers um, your information and how to get in touch with you. It does have your website on it. Let's put up that slide. Uh, your website address, in addition to a telephone number, um, and I'm sure that they can reach out to DBAD uh, to to communicate with the board. Do you um, normally invite the public to to your meetings to participate? Absolutely. We, we encourage the public and small business uh, to come to meetings, to participate if they can, to submit some you know testimony or information uh, on upcoming rules rules that we will be reviewing and and that's the only way that we can truly represent small business and the specific issues that they deal with is through their involvement participation and information you know i i personally want to thank uh, you and all of all of the board members for giving of your time voluntarily um in the interest of uh, other small business owners Unfortunately, we are out of time, but I am so thankful for the opportunity f to share um, to share and to gather that information and be able to th reach out and, and get to your website and, and see all the great things that you folks are doing for small businesses in Hawaii. It's so, our pleasure, Jane. Thank you. Chairman Kundef and Mary, thank you so much for joining us. A big thank you to our production staff here in the studio. If you would like to be a guest on the show, please like us and subscribe and leave a comment below. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. and we look forward to seeing you here next week.